So probably the most talked about moment in the NCAA tournament this year uh, is, hasn't been Zion Williamson's dunk or Duke losing early or Virginia's buzzy be beater. I think the most talked about moment uh, was the exchange between Coach Tom Izzo and Aaron Henry uh, during a timeout. And everybody you know, seems to be debating whether he crossed the line or he didn't. And, and honestly, I, I feel a little bit bad for Tom Izzo. I think it's unfair to Tom Izzo because the reality is this is Tom Izzo every day. Right? This is how he coaches all the time. And for some reason, largely because of ESPN, CBS, and, and social media, uh, for some reason this is blown up. Um, also, this isn't just Tom Izzo. This is so many coaches. This is the way so many coaches coach all over the world. This is the way that I coached for years. All right? I'm very, very familiar uh, with the rage monster. Right? It's, it's a very familiar uh, behavior and myself as a coach who would yell and scream and get in players' faces. Uh, but I think the problem here is that people are asking the wrong question. People are asking the question, did he cross the line? Did Tom Izzo cross the line? And that's the wrong question. Right? I, as a coach, people would ask me that question, are you crossing the line? Or I would reflect on it. And I could always justify my behavior. Things changed for me as a coach when I started to ask a different question. And that question was, is this the best way to coach? Is this the best way to coach? And when I started to ask that, I then really started to reflect and look at the science and look at the, my experience and just look at some logical reasons on why this probably wasn't the best way to coach. So over the next few days, I'm gonna be sharing some more videos, essentially 10 reasons why as coaches, we shouldn't yell at our players. I know that some of these will be very, very controversial, all right, reason number one that coaches should not yell at their players is this. It is simply much, much harder for most coaches to not yell. People like to argue and defend themselves or defend other coaches' behavior by saying that they're toughing them up and that it takes courage to hold people accountable. Here's the reality. There's no intentionality. When I would yell and scream and demean my play, at my, be demeaning to my players, I was just resorting to my default response, right? We're talking about the better way, the better way, the best way of coaching. Well, that takes intentionality. That takes a skill to be developed. And it wasn't a conscious decision one day where I woke up and said, I'll never yell again. I had to develop other ways to communicate, other ways to hold people accountable without being demeaning. That is much, much harder. It is much harder to be demanding without being demeaning Right, than to do both at the same time. Right? It's very, very easy to yell and scream for so many of us as coaches. And so if we want to be the best coach that we can be, we've got to be intentional. And that means that we need to find other ways to communicate and hold people accountable than to yell and to scream at them. Reason number two, we want emotionally balanced athletes. We want emotionally balanced athletes. And there's a few things you understand about the brain that we're going to cover today. The first one is that the right and the left side do very different things. The right side of your brain is the emotional side. The left side is the logical side. And often when we're yelling at players, they are already upset, frustrated. They are already emotional. And when we yell at them when they're already emotional, we only make them more emotional. But we want to bring balance in there. And so often what we need to do is we need to find other ways to hold them accountable, to push them and to motivate them without using emotion right we need to be able to connect with them first all right connect with what they're feeling and then be able to what daniel dr daniel j siegel says which is connect and redirect we re redirect them to start using the left side of their brain so they can start thinking and being more logical reason number three is we want players who can think all right we want players who can think now, the brain can also be broken down into the lower and the upper. The lower part of our brain is very lower functioning parts. It's the breathing, it's blinking, it's the survival things like fight or flight. Now, the upper part is our higher levels of thinking. It's higher functioning. It's, it's, it's being able to make really good decisions. Now, there's other aspects of the brain we can understand, which is the amygdala. The amygdala is part of the lower part of the brain, and it's triggered when it senses fear. So we're yelling we're connecting, we're activating the amygdala. And when the amygdala activates, it actually cuts off the connections between the lower and the upper parts of the brain. So we've got to find other ways in yelling to hold players accountable and to motivate them 
then activating the amygdala in this situation here, if we want players that don't just aren't just quick to respond out there, but players who can think on the court or on the field. Reason number four is we are leading with fear, not leading with tough love when we yell at our players. My parents were incredibly great at this. They had they practiced tough love every day with me uh, as a kid growing up, but they never had to yell. When I didn't do my chores around the house, they just said, oh, you don't get to have this privilege. They just pulled it away. They didn't yell. They didn't scream. They didn't beg. They didn't plead with me. They just enforced boundaries, and they did it in a loving way, and it was still tough love. And I tell you what, it wasn't soft. Reason number five is this. We want an intrinsically motivated environment, not an extrinsically motivated environment. Check out the book uh, Drive by Daniel Pink. He goes into the science uh, of intrinsic versus extrinsic motivated environments. But the bottom line is this. We want players that work hard. We want players that have a good attitude. We want them to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, because it's who we want them to be as players, because who they want to be as players, not just who we want them to be, and it's who they want to be as a team. That's an intrinsically motivated environment, and that's what we want to create. And if you're yelling and screaming, you're creating resistance, you're creating obstacles from you having that intrinsically motivated environment. Yes, those extrinsic motivators may get you the results and the effects quickly, but they will not be lasting. Right, and they will not help you to foster and nurture the intrinsically motivated environment. Reason number six is this. Right? Yelling is coach-led. Yelling is coach-led. We want a, uh, a player-led team. Right? A player-led team holds each other accountable. A player-led team, the coach just has to come in and make little adjustments here. Help encourage people. They're, yes, and hold people accountable, but in some very light ways. When a coach is yelling and screaming, things have completely broken down, and that is a coach-led team. The teams that I, I work with, the teams that I would coach, I want them to be a player-led team, not a coach-led team. And when we're yelling and screaming, we are at that stage a coach-led team. Reason number seven, it is unacceptable in any other profession. I don't care if you work for McDonald's, Goldman Sachs, or the Washington Post. If you speak to your employees the way that so many of us coaches speak to our players, you'll be fired on the spot or sent to anger management that very day. There is very, very, very few businesses in the world today in 2019 that would ever allow or tolerate their leaders to speak to their employees that way, especially in front of all their customers, which is essentially what coaches do when we yell and scream at our players on the sideline in a, in a gym full of people and fans. We tear people down right in front of everybody else and publicly humiliating them often. Reason number eight, it's a double standard. It's a double standard. As a coach, we seem to have this pass, this pass to be able to yell and criticize uh, our players and to scream at them, but everybody else is held to a, this other standard, right? The players can't speak to the coaches that way. The players can't speak to even each other that way. In fact, they're expected to often to come in and build the people back up. Even the assistant coaches, they're not, you know, not asked to, to yell and scream at the players. They're, they're asked to come in there and help build the players back up after we go after them really hard. And this is a double standard when, in fact, what we should be doing as a leader is we should be setting the example, the example of how we should communicate, how we should hold people accountable, how we should criticize in a way that is demanding without being demeaning. Number nine. You are not preparing them for the real world. People like to argue. They like to argue that when people are, when a coach is yelling and screaming at his players or her players, that they're toughening them up. They're, they're, they're preparing them for the real world. But here's the truth. The truth is the world doesn't need more of that. The world needs more leaders who set an example worth following. We need leaders out there who lead with love and kindness and respect, not fear and intimidation. We need leaders who respect the dignity of people. Reason number 10, and my last reason for why we shouldn't yell at our players is this. There simply is a better way to coach. There simply is a better way to coach. James Clear on my podcast posed this question for coaches. Is the way that I first learned to coach the best way to coach? And I ask coaches this all the time now. I say, is the way that I'm currently, or the way that you're currently coaching, is that the best way to coach? We've got to be asking that question all the time. And reasons one through nine that I've given on this series here have gone into some of the science, some of the experience, some of the logic 
behind why yelling isn't the best way to coach. And I'm not saying coaches that yell are bad coaches. As a coach, I've yelled plenty of times and still fall into that trap, just as I do as a parent. But every time I do, I know I can sit back and reflect and I can come to these realizations of what would have been a better way. And so we have to work at this. We have to train ourselves as coaches. We have to really retrain ourselves because our default mode of operation so often is to yell, to scream is our instant reaction. But there's better ways to do that. And so I'd encourage you to go to thriveonchallenge.com and check out some of the resources I have there. Also check out the Coaching Culture Podcast uh, and the Culture Builders Podcast. They're on iTunes and all the other platforms out there. Uh, giving you plenty of resources and tools to help you become a better coach and to be build a better culture. Lastly, don't stop asking this question. Is there a better way of doing things? Is there a better way of coaching? That's the question we've got to be asking for the rest of our lives.